So it's a different, it's a different way of life altogether. When we're motivated by God in our heart, then than if we're motivated by a decision in our head <coughs> that can change. You see, when you are touched by God, when the Holy Spirit comes into you and into your heart, something changes and you can't go back. You can't suddenly say, well, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be a Christian anymore. I don't want to go to church anymore. I don't want to read my Bible anymore. And I don't want to be godly. And I don't want to be thinking about God. I don't want to be following Jesus anymore. I just want to go my own way. It doesn't work. You can't do that as a Christian. It just doesn't work. You cannot deny the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot deny that, you, that God has touched your life. How can, you, how can you deny the Lord Jesus Christ who loved you so much to stretch out his arms on the cross and die for you? When you really know that deep in your heart and you've understood the love of God and you have felt the love of God how can you deny that and walk away from it ever again it's an impossible thing once God has you once he has your heart you can't let go you can't let him let go you don't want him to let go you can never ever go your own way ever again just an impossibility if he really has your heart so, of course, when people decide to go their own way <clears throat> after making a profession of faith, you know, following that prayer and saying, oh, well, I believe then I've got, you know, <clears throat> and, and following a prayer that someone has, has given you to evangelise you, <clears throat> quite often it, it's coming from a desire to want to conform, a desire maybe to want to be accepted, a desire to be one of the people, you know, one of this new tribe, you know, because they've seen the love, they've they maybe <clears throat> discovered how much people do for each other in the Christian faith, and they think, oh, I'll go for that. <clears throat> it sounds like a good idea. It sounds like something that would be really good for me, and, and I'm going to get a lot of good out of this, you know. I'm going to be with people that care about me for a change, and I don't see that in the world, so I'm attracted to this. But nothing's really happened in their own hearts yet. It's about getting rather than giving. It's a different attitude, you see. That's what happens. And what happened here with the Holy Spirit is that people were changed. They didn't just have these miraculous things going on and tongues landing on their head. It changed them forever. When the Holy Spirit came on them in Pente uh, Pentecost, it changed their lives completely, forever. They become very bold for God. They didn't care what people thought. They could not deny the Lord of all glory. Peter said, how can we stop talking about Jesus? We saw, we saw him. We, we touched him. We saw his miracles. We recognized. We knew who he was. We saw that he was God. And you crucified him. How can we not speak of this? So we can't deny God. And, and God does bring us a sense of boldness into our lives for God. When you, when you have really tasted the love of God in your heart and you then learn to love God yourself, you cannot stop yourself from defending God whenever you need, you feel that you ought to without putting a word forward for God when, when you feel that the, the time is right. And you can't stop being Christian-like, because you want to follow the way of the Master. It's really important that you follow Jesus when you're a Christian. He's our example. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So we have to follow Jesus because that's the only way to the Father. So why would we want to do anything else other than do that? And when we come into the New Testament, to the Gospel... Jesus says in uh, 
chapter 15, verse 26. But when the Helper comes, whom I shall send to you from the Father, he's the Spirit of, the, of truth <coughs> who proceeds from the Father, he will testify of me. So the primary work of, of the Holy Spirit here, right in this verse verse, is to say, the Helper, the Spirit of truth, when he comes from the Father, he will testify of me. So his job is to testify in you about Jesus. So when you have the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit reveals the Lord Jesus Christ to you. That's one of the tests you know, we can use as to whether someone really has become a believer or not, whether they really are a true believer, because it's only the Holy Spirit that reveals who Jesus really is. Not Bible studies, but the Holy Spirit. So we give the word, it's good to read the word, and we give the word and we preach <coughs> the word, and that is the way by which people come to God. They read about God through the word. <coughs> and the Holy Spirit reveals Jesus to us. He opens our eyes to the Lord Jesus. That's his function. Satan has us blinded because he is the he's the god of this world, he's the prince of this this the earth. You know, Adam gave him legal ownership when he fell. When they fell from grace, Adam gave up his right over the creation which God put him. And so suddenly Satan comes in and he becomes the one who controls this world, because Adam gave up his birthright. But when we become Christians, the Holy Spirit comes into our hearts, and we suddenly gain our birthright back. We know good from evil. We can see, for, oh, for once in our lives, we can start to see and understand about Jesus and about good and evil and understand the truth of it. <clears throat> and that's what happens here. He will testify of me. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. So Jesus says to his disciples straight off, there you go, when this happens, when you get this helper who will give you the strength and will give you the truth, he will reveal all things to you, he will teach you about me, you have been with me from the beginning and you will also bear witness. You will also testify to this fact. <clears throat> And then we go on to chapter 16 and verse 4. And he says, But these things I've told you, that when the time comes, you may remember that I told you of them. So he's telling them ahead of time. He's prophesying, like Ezekiel, and he's saying, this is what's going to happen. So Ezekiel had already prophesied it hundreds of years before, saying, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to pour out my spirit on your flesh. I'm going to make you alive again you're going to be you know dead people are going to come alive in a spiritual sense you know we are spiritually dead under satan's control before we become christians but when we become believers and the holy spirit comes into us and reveals the lord jesus christ to us our spirit is revived we become alive again in the spirit and we begin to see and understand and that's what he's saying here and this was a prophesy prophecy from Christ of what was going to happen when he'd gone back to heaven. This is what was going to happen then. And these things, he says, I did not say to you at the beginning because I was with you. Well, when we had Jesus, we didn't need the Holy Spirit because Jesus is there. But, you know, when Jesus has to go back to heaven, then we need the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. He's the spirit of truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit is the truth. This is where we can see quite often the Trinity in full swing. When people say, oh, don't understand Trinity. It doesn't say Trinity in the Bible. No, but we understand the Godhead. We understand that it's God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We understand that they're all equal, and yet they are subservient in their roles. We understand that as Christians, because it right through Scripture so we don't have to have a word that says the Trinity. We can work it out. We're not stupid. We can actually work out what it's actually saying to us and how our systematic theology works through these things and we can understand. <clears throat>